2007, 2008, and the next couple of years, it was the big screen. Like you had Slumdog Millionaire. I can tell you what I remember about Slumdog Millionaire. Everyone oh. saying to me, why weren't you in that film? <laughs> Some, but like, it, but it was a great film, and that film went to the Oscars, right? It did, yeah. It won. It won Best Picture at the Oscars. It won several awards at the Oscars. It made ARM on this huge star in Absolutely. the West as well. And we had J Ho with the Pussycat Dolls. <laughs> So weird, when we look back at a lot of these huge moments now, our perspective on them is different. And a lot of people consider Slumdog Millionaire what's now, con what's now known as like poverty porn. Like you're, you're gazing into the slums of an environment with a particular perspective or lens, pitying mm. that environment when you're looking at it from this, from th this part of the world, when actually it's quite different on the ground there. But could you, argue that if it wasn't for films that do that, like your East is East, your Ben Lad Beckham, your Slumdog Millionaire, then we wouldn't have the door open for us to kind of come in with other stories. It, st it starts off with something that's as broad as that. And then within that, it allows the gateway for other people to come in with smaller stories that might be more reflective of that. I don't like know. Four Lions? That's the question. Yeah, Four Lions was completely left field. I mean, what a comedy. That, that comedy still makes me laugh. Before the battery goes. One, yeah. two, three, action. Hey, you, you unbelieving kafar bastards. I'm going to turn no, your fair beans. No, no, no. What? What's with the gun? So I was at uni when Four Lions released. Yeah. Of course, starring Riz Ahmed, Adil Akhtar, Priya Khalida, so many <laughs> great actors. She makes it a prick. Priya gets the most mentions in this she show. She does. Without doubt. Hey, you, you unbelieving kafar bastards. No, 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 this is absolutely stupid. Hey! And you know, for me, right, this is gonna sound really silly. When I heard those guys come on screen and they spoke with that accent, it blew my mind away. That sound was incredible. Like the delivery of the dialogues in that accent, like rubber dinghy rapids, bro. Rubber dinghy rapids, bro. Like, rubber dinghy rapids. Yeah, rubber dinghy rapids. Everything. Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah, everything, every dialogue was just brilliant. Yeah. Like Mortal Kombat. Riz Ahmed's character is trying to tell the others to like stay on track because one's having like, he's doubting whether he still wants to go ahead with this attack and he's getting scared and um, he like grabs a knife and he goes, I'm going to take this yet and I'm going to run you over with the tractor. And the whole, <laughs> like, none of it makes sense. I'd fucking, I'd take this yet yeah? and I'd fucking run you over with tractor. Yeah. Yeah. The heart of, or the, the kind of, the central point of Four Lions actually really serious. And yeah. again, all of those actors, Kayvan Nowak, Riz Ahmed, Adil, Adil Akhtar. Benedict Cumberbatch. What are your demands? I don't have any. They decide, okay, we're gonna become terrorists. And then they go on this journey and it's completely absurd. And it's just like, oh my God, I can't believe the disillusionment of these characters. Why are you doing this? Robert Dingy Rapids. Sorry? Robert Dingy Rapids, bro. And that's what's Bus track. so funny and sad at the same time. Yeah. And you just, <laughs> it is a brilliant film. It's definitely up there for me. Considering that that was the first time you heard Asian speaking with a Northern accent. That sounds really silly, doesn't it? But it is. It it's is fair enough. Did you then watch Educating Yorkshire a couple of years later? I did. I did. What's it like getting through school with a stammer? Uh, Hard. It was the year I became a teacher. Mushy um, and the episode where he overcomes his stammer. At that time, young teenage Asian boys were only ever shown as like terrorists or villains or um, in a negative light. And that was the first time we saw a teenage Asian boy shown as vulnerable yeah. and shown as part of an inspirational and positive story. And I think that was completely and utterly beautiful. The I own this is the same moment when the trees are loose, the soft arm from around you, the birds take back their language. I mean, Chana directed, if I'm correct, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but he directed a show about him. Yeah. With Rifko, to go, with Rifko Arts. To the moment I felt like I was chosen. I was the boy that was golden, but I wasn't cured. I was frozen. And I met him. I met the guy. Incredible man. You met Mushy? Yes, I met oh. him. Uh, and the show was called Mushy, I yeah. think. 
and then you just you could relate to him so well because especially with uh, any sort of problems in the community like a stam or a mental health it's not talked about yeah. and then he overcomes it in front of an audience yeah. the school has helped me improve so much that i do not have enough words to tell you all how i really am going to miss the school the teachers the students and just the whole and just the whole high school environment it was that real juxtaposition in educating Yorkshire of somebody as vulnerable as Mushy and somebody as sassy as Hadika. Do you remember Hadika on the show? Have you got that clip? We've got it. Let's, let's watch Hadika. Miss, can I just tell her? I'm sorry to hear that your grandma passed away. Yeah, I actually am. Like, obviously, I'm going, to be, I'm going to be upset about that, yeah? And Hadika, you know, the only thing is no one can force me to be a mate or anything, yeah? And I don't want to be mates with you, all right? See, the thing oh, is... Oh, my gosh. The thing is, she was sympathetic. <laughs> Listen. I don't care if your grandma passed away. I don't no, care she about cares. That. She does care. Oh, she care. does care. I'm she's, sorry she's to hear. Sorry. I'm sorry. She's okay. genuinely <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. But I don't want to be your mate. Yeah, listen <laughs> and no one can force her. That. I'll tell you the beauty of it. The beauty of it, as you said, is the fact that you've got these two children who are so, like, different. And it just, like reinforces the idea which often we don't of the fact that not all Asians are the same yeah like there isn't one what's the word like all-encompassing personality there isn't one like it's not one type there's not one Asian experience there's not one so those two children being so different from each other just kind of exemplifies that within one show and you know it was it was viral before things were viral in today's sense yeah I know like I always I have a problem and I always take it like too deep sometimes but in a world and a society where Asian women are always expected to be like submissive and like quiet and accept everything that comes your way, she's not having it. Nor is Pooja. I, I rate that. Nor is Pooja. Who is Pooja? Let's have a look. Pooja, what is this behavior? I'm sorry, I kicked it by mistake. You can't kick it by mistake. Then you pick it up if it bothers no, it you. No, you will pick it up. You don't tell me what to do. I can tell you what you to do. do. No, yes, me what to do. You do not tell me what to do. You do not tell me what to do. Or what? Are you going to hit me? Do you want it? I don't want it. Because you're those. asking for it. You're dying for it. Get off my back. <laughs> oh, this clip. I've never seen it. You've never seen I've this? I've never seen it. Have you seen it? I've heard the audio of it. Okay. I've never seen this clip. The reason why I mentioned this straight she, after wait, Hadika. On. Sorry, the, the woman that kicked the bin. <laughs> she's Pooja. She's Pooja. Because Pooja, what is this she's behavior? From, she's from India? I'm not sure. Because she just changed she, accent. She went Scottish at times. She, she went Scottish. She did go You're like, dying for it. Yeah. <laughs> I just went, is this an advert? <laughs> yeah. So the reason I, I, I mentioned that now is because Hadika and Pooja are two classic examples of how we have these like meme moments in British Asian pop culture. I know this is in Big Boss India, but there were these moments over the last 20 years which will forever remain kind of gif material, you can yeah, say, right? Yeah. You're going to send them as gifts, you're going to quote them whenever you can. And Hadika was definitely that girl. Yeah. Booja was definitely that girl. But do you remember the first time you ever saw a British Asian or an Asian meme that was popular amongst British Asians? No, do you right. ever remember? You're right, I don't know. I can I show you one? Go on. Of my favourite. I'm trying to think. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me you know this. Of course. Come on, you must know I this. Remember. <laughs> oh so, my god, when was this? Uh, it must have been like mid 2000s, but it was probably the first video that I remember going again viral before viral was a thing. What I love about the mushy moment is, is you're, that, taking it, you're taking it back to mushy. Go uh, on. Only because, uh, like, what I love about the mushy moment is that it wasn't funny. Yeah. Oh. And it goes back to what we were saying about Asians always being like the butt of the joke and always being laughed at. Yeah. You weren't laughing with him. You were loving him and you were rooting for him and you were celebrating him. <laughs> Humanising our stories, normalising our stories. I think that's what was really beautiful about Mushi. I think that's my favourite moment we've spoken about so far.